Well, hello there everyone, UXW Bill here with you once again, and today I've got a computer video for your viewing pleasure, but this is going to be a departure from the regular kind of computer video that I do. I was a fairly bad boy recently. I stopped into a computer store while I was out working on a consulting job because I needed some case screws. I know, hard to believe I didn't actually have some with me. The proprietor of the store was kind enough to give those to me at no cost, and while I was in the store, well, I happened to see a pile of sad-looking computers on the floor, and I inquired about potentially buying some of them. And while I need more computers, like I need a hole in my head, Five of them followed me home at five dollars a piece. Three of them have been tested and they work and they've actually got decent... No, I take that back. Two of them have been tested. One of them is upstairs under the piano. One of them's still riding out around in my pickup truck. And this one, a Dell Dimension 2350, has been tested and found to be completely dead. And from the looks of things, I think it's safe to say that it very probably was not owned by what you might consider classy people. That's not the only thing I noticed about it. I noticed that in between the optical drives while I was inspecting this machine, there's something hidden in there. Looks like an optical disc to me. My first question to you is how in the world did somebody happen to miss that? <laughs> My second question is, what optical disc do you suppose it could be? And that's what we're going to find out today. I'll go ahead and pop the cover off of this machine. And again, Maybe the people that own this were not, shall we say, the sharpest tools in the shed. The way this has been wrenched, maybe it was an accident, I don't know. I do know that I've never seen a power supply quite like this before in one of these. The case for these was manufactured, or at least designed, by MyTac International Corporation. This is the first time I've actually seen a MyTac branded power supply in one of them. And before you say it's not the original, I will point out that that is a Dell part number and revision sticker. The power supplies I usually see in these are either High Pro, Foxconn, or Light On. This power supply, I don't know if it works or not. I would guess maybe not because the pilot light on the motherboard never illuminated. And while I wouldn't say it was overbuilt by any stretch of the imagination like Dell's power supplies usually are, I will say that everything inside it looks okay. It's surprisingly dust-free on the inside, even though I did blow this computer out with the air compressor. There usually tends to be some dust that straggles along in the bottom or up here. But in this case, there was none. It's got good quality Japanese capacitors in it. None of them are domed or bloated. All of them are Rubicons. And I also noticed that the primary chopper transistor has an utterly massive heat sink on it. But like I say, that's not what we're here to talk about. I have just got to find out what that disc might be. Well, that came off easily. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see here. I might have to remove both of these optical drives because I don't want to scratch it up. And hopefully, well, if it's not completely scratched up already, Hopefully this won't turn into quite the video epic that the clock battery video did. <laughs> I made that video with the intent of just being completely off the wall and incredibly silly. It was not supposed to be a serious video by any stretch of the imagination. Go ahead and pull these cables here. Let's see what this might be. It looks like, I'm going to guess a music CD. What's your guess? Want to pause the video and make one? Feel free. All right, there's that. I'm wrong. It's Microsoft Zoo Tycoon Marine Mania. <laughs> looks like it's been there a while, too. Also looks like maybe some kind of liquid was spilled on this. Not real sure. But if nothing else, I've got a decent selection of parts here to keep some other Dell machines alive. And so my third question to you, because I always think it's fun to make these videos kind of a community effort before I go ahead and wrap this up. My third question is to those of you in the audience who have performed computer work professionally or on the side. Now again, let's keep it, uh, you know, let's keep it halfway decent here. Nothing too off the regular beaten path. Nothing too scary. Nothing too gross out. What's the strangest thing you've ever found inside a computer? that somebody might have forgotten was there, or maybe they put it there because they were trying to hide it from someone. I would certainly like to know. Go ahead and feel free to leave a comment if you have one about that very exciting subject. And please do make sure 
because everybody these days is posting comments via Google Plus whether you realize it or not. Please do try to make sure that your comments can be replied to because I like to have discussions with all the people who comment on my videos and there is nothing more supremely annoying than to have someone ask a question or to post something that I find interesting and would like to discuss with them only to find that there's no reply button on the comment. So check out your Google Plus settings. Make sure that everyone can reply to what they call your public postings. I'll be posting a much more in-depth video about this. And there is a reason why, because there's going to come a point when I am, so to say, going to draw a line in the sand about the whole matter of video comments. Any comment that cannot be replied to, there's going to come a time when I am simply going to delete them. Because if they cannot be replied to, if they cannot be discussed, is there really a point for their being there? No, I don't think there is. You might disagree with that, and you're welcome to, but remember, this is my channel, and there are certain expectations that I have of the things that go on here. So with that said, thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment that others can reply to. And oh, by the way, since there are a few people in the audience who will undoubtedly ask or express some curiosity about what it is I do with all the computers I find, well, some of them do end up being sold on, given away, what have you. But in this case, one of them became a PXE boot server for my network, a very, very handy project indeed. Now I don't have to burn and subsequently lose all those CDs for the utilities that I find myself using regularly while servicing computers. And here's a quick little demonstration of the aforementioned PXE boot server. There probably will be a much more detailed video about this in the future because I think it has the potential to be extraordinarily useful for many of us who work on computers. I know it will certainly be useful for me. And I also know that this particular software, which is capable of booting into quite a few different things and can even be modified to boot additional things that its authors do not offer as a plug-in download, is not the first thing that comes up in a web search when you go looking for this kind of software. In fact, it took me quite a while to find it, and so that's probably why there will be a video in the future discussing it. But in the meanwhile, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at some of the things that you can do here. That's the entry that I customized for spin right there. As you can see, there it comes right up, and it works very, very nicely after a lot of trial and error. <laughs> because nothing is ever easy, you know. All right, that is the video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and by all means, feel free to leave a comment. But again, make sure that it can be replied to if you happen to have one.